Doreen. Now, where does Doreen live? Far away or close by? Whoa! Why are the rats still coming out here? Oh my god! Look at how many there are! Where are you guys going? I want to igni them, but I don't want to alarm we'll people around here. here. Where are you guys going? This is like the Pied Piper, what the heck? To the inn where Corrine is? <laughs> My is... <laughs> you guys led me right here! What's the oh, thank you! Nothing. Burgers and Burgesses of the free city of Novigrad. Master Cl I believe I see a challenger who seeks to subdue I'll make you driver. Oh, there's a there's a fist fighting tournament here. Alright. Master Claytop heartily greets the challenger. Greetings to Master Claytop from Geralt. Will you take up the challenge? Will you face our tavern's champion? Gladly. All in. 80! Oh my god, we're in the big cities for sure. Even the bets are getting bigger. Yeah, I'll fight this Gregorio fellow. Your attention, please! This fine witcher has agreed to join in battle with our tavern's champion, George's George. While our champion prepares, you and I should have a chat. Oh my god. Let us talk coin. I shall be blunt. You stand to earn a great deal, provided you follow a few recommendations. You asking me to cheat? Not to cheat. To engage in an enterprise, that is all. What say you? Mmm, I'll listen. How much will you give me to throw the fight? Considerably more than if you win. We had a similar situation, not even just in The Witcher 3, but even back in The Witcher 2. Remember the guy in that castle? He... Yeah, he wanted me to throw. Kinda wanna see what would happen if I say I'll cheat. But I don't. A bucket of coin for taking some hits to the face? Tempting offer. I'm in. What do I do? Nothing much. Throw some punches, not too many, mind. Then let him drop you. A warm welcome to our competitors as they enter the ring. Geralt versus Georges George, the pile driver. May the better man win. Okay, if you say so. Oh. Yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna lose. <laughs> I learned my lesson last time. I feel like I'm cheating all the time here because we've always been fighting humans, oh. but they know they're going up against the Witcher. Why are they risking this? Well, how long are you gonna make me wait? <laughs> this guy seems pretty strong though. Level 15. He's actually higher level than me. Fucky, come on. But it's just a fist fight, so I think we'll be okay. Yeah, as long as we counter properly. It's a bit unbelievable, isn't it? For the average person to be able to beat a... Witcher? He did get a good hit on me, just now. Hey, what are you doing, man? Slow to the freak! Hmm? They're too far away from me. You wanna get a few more in on me, or...? Is that gonna be it? I made you a lucrative offer, did I not? Yeah, but there's nothing quite like robbing a thief or cheating a cheat. <laughs> I shall remember this. Master Claytop never forgets a slight. Our winner and the tavern's new champion is the Witcher called Geralt. Here is your prize. Archibald O'Neill is another brawler you can fight. You'll find him near the entrance to the slums. There's also Mortimer, captain of the guard. He can usually be found near the Oxenfurt Gate. Thanks for the information. <laughs> we basically pissed this guy off for no reason. I'm okay with that. Back in The Witcher 2, I think that happened as well, and what happened later on was there that was in the middle of walking around in the streets, somebody tried attacking me, so I'm guessing this guy might try to do the same here. 
Master Claytop. All right. Hey, man, how are you doing? Hmm. Nobody wants to talk to me anymore. Mind the guards. Where are the people? Holy crap, we broke 5,000 crowns now. Not bad. Somewhere in here, we can exchange our florins and orins for crowns as well, right? I think we have a good bit of those, so we should probably look for the bank or wherever we do that. Okay. Door slamming shut. I don't even know what that is. Another monster? Fists of Fury. This one's level 23. Yeah. Um, I forgot to look at what level this whole quest was before we came here. Hmm. But I don't think it really matters though, because it's just fist fighting. You just have to counter properly and it should be okay. But you know, we'll save it for when we actually should be doing it. Following the thread. Okay, okay, this one we should do. That's actually sort of relevant to us. But for now, we will be talking Sucks. to Kareen. There's also a quest outside the inn, it seems. On the mini-map. I'm busy! Where's Dandelion? Whoa there, rag picker! Rag picker? Oh, the bottom floor? Yeah, it's just a nice little quiet Wouldn't in know here. Where parrot Apparently is, would some you? dwarves opened a brothel in hey. Novigrad. Whitey. They say he's got Why'd your hair go white? She knows and a two-headed she troll. Wow, that's that's quite an exotic assortment. Ah, no glass tastes as sweet as the you first back in pool. Taste the salted cod, don't leave me till after the tent. Or thirty is. Surprisingly enough, there is no stash in here. And those skeleton barbarians would have had us. What's up here? The kitchen? It's all right that we're stealing from the inn, right? The um, the golden sturgeon. Storage area. Don't mind if I do. There's a door here. Bathroom? Oh! Oh, I thought you were downstairs. <laughs> that actually... That gave me quite a scare. <laughs> oh, Hold on, okay? Hang on, Kareen. Just give me a second here. No. Oh, you can even go higher. Oh. It seems like there's not that many rooms in this inn. Oh, is this an expensive inn? Is Corrine quite wealthy to be able to afford a room here? Actually, the fact that Corrine lives at an inn tells me that she's not a native Novigrad person, right? She came from somewhere else as well. And maybe the whole aniromancy is really profitable for her to be able to afford a place in the inn like this. Seeing as how a lot of people here just live in some really small cramped apartment. Hello, Corrine. Wow, your place is... This doesn't look temporary at all. Very nice, very nice. Ooh, look at that. Got some yin yang stuff here. A dream in here. Ah! Never witnessed a seance like this before, let alone participated. I will guide you. You must first achieve a kind of mental accord. I must ask some questions. You must answer them. It's important you're truthful. Answer from your heart. Your gift. Tell me how it works. It's hard to describe. To start with, I must gain an understanding of the bond between the person and the object I'm to dream about. I ask questions, try to flesh out feelings, emotions. Truth is essential in this. And though most who come to me acknowledge that, many refuse to speak openly of certain matters. Apart from which, they remain unaware of others, further obscuring things. What do you see in your dreams? I don't. It's my client who sees. My gift lies in summoning the right dreams. At times, nightmares or strong desires impose themselves on true events. It takes skill to separate seed from chaff. If you're going to ask me about Siri, I don't see why I should lie. Let's begin. To start with, tell me a memory you have of this woman. What for? 
Do as I ask, please. I need the strongest, most complete memory you have of... Siri. The woman's name is Siri. The strongest memory. Is this actually a true or false thing? Because she was there when I died. That's something that's from the books, but we didn't really see here. Saved her life once. I feel like that happened so many times, and that's kind of vague sounding. I remember when we first met. Do you? Well, I, uh, yeah, that's also from the books. I trained her at Kaer Morn as the only one that we've actually seen here. And I guess that's our strongest memory because we were dreaming about it. Siri was orphaned during the second war with Nilfgaard. I had no idea what to do with a young girl. So I did what I would have done with a boy and took her to Kaer Morin. Figured some physical training, sword work, development of her stamina couldn't hurt. I remember her standing on a crumbling wall. A stone came loose, she lost her footing. Caught her at the last possible instant. Strongest memory, though, is of her coming out of her room one day. Wearing a dress and claiming she was indisposed. Knew then that Siri was maturing. It was unavoidable. I was lost in the face of that. I see. Do you wish to tell me anything more? Yes. I think so. In that case, I'm listening. Do I want to say everything? Mm. We first met when she was really, really young. I'm not sure how relevant that is to her being... Because she's quite old now. 21. Is that going to be relevant in finding her? Maybe. Maybe. I accepted a job once. Did it. Asked to choose my reward, I invoked the Law of Surprise. Never thought I'd actually meet the child promised to me at that time. Years later, I was in the Broccolon Forest. Happened on a girl there, didn't know who she was. The Dryads wanted to keep her, turn her into one of their own. But the Waters of Oblivion, they failed in her case. Siri came out of Broccolon with me. I sent her back to her grandmother then. But already, I felt bound to her. By destiny. By something more. Thank you. Would you be willing to share another memory? Could this possibly come back to bite me? I don't see how. Yes. No need to rush. We have time. Maybe these are just things to give a little bit more context for people who haven't read the books. It was after her time training at Kaer Morhen. After the moment when Yennefer first called Ciri her daughter. We'd been separated. I knew she was in danger. I dreamt of her multiple times. I found her at Stiga Castle. She'd gone there to free Yen and gotten herself captured in the process. They wanted to hurt her. I remember fighting side by side with Ciri on stairs slippery from blood. It was the first time she ever deflected a crossbow bolt with her sword. Told her never to try it again. <laughs> These memories, they're intense. Do you wish to continue? I have more to say. Then please do. It was in Rivia. The second war with Nilfgaard had just ended. There was still tension in the air. For gods know what reason race riots erupted in the town. I tried to do something, but couldn't stop a riled crowd. A boy with a pitchfork. He ran it right through my gut. Jennifer lay dying as well. Siri had us carried onto a boat. We sailed to a place where apple trees bloom eternal. She left us there. It was the last time I saw her. You claim the woman has abilities. Tell me about them. She's a child of the Elder Blood. A descendant of Bloody Falker? The rebel burned at the stake. The prophecies claim the world's destroyer will be born of the Firebrand's cursed blood. That might be revealing a bit too much. Pure legend. 
know when a legend transforms into prophecy? When it gains believers? I think you're right to be reticent in talking about the woman. I see. Do you wish to say more? <laughs> We're in too deep. Yeah, there's something else. They call Ciri the Lady of Space and Time. Once I asked Yennefer why, she... travels between worlds. <laughs> Turns out I don't know how to talk about it. Didn't really understand much of what Yen told me. I just know there's more to it than traveling to different places, and that Ciri carries immense power in her blood. I see. Do you wish to say more? I forget that sometimes too, but um... We, when we read the books, when we see series segments, obviously we see the extent of her powers and all, but these things are only what Siri experiences, and other people really don't quite understand what it is. Yeah, there's something else. I remember Siri having trouble controlling her abilities. Yennefer tried to teach her to cast simple spells, and Siri destroyed a shed near the temple where they were. Really upset her but it was just an old shed. I know it took her a while to gain control, and frankly, I doubt she controls her abilities fully to this day. I see. Do you wish to say more? No. Can we start? Naturally. I knew you cared about her. But your tone, the emotions you so carefully conceal. Let's continue, please. Make yourself comfortable and try to relax. You must take my hand and talk of Ciri. Tell me where you think she might be. Who could be at her side? Mm -hmm. If Ciri couldn't find me, I'm sure she would have looked for another friend. Who do you mean? I don't think she would look for Dandelion. Triss was like her older sister and Yennefer is basically her mom, so I feel like those are much more logical choices to be looking for, although she would take whoever she can find, really. Hmm. Yennefer wasn't in Novigrad, Triss was, but Ciri never found her. Maybe Dandelion? Oh. They liked each other a lot. I'm the one sleeping. I thought you were gonna sleep too. That's our first look at Dandelion, in the flesh. Why is that bird bugging him? Hey, he's doing well for himself, look at him! What? The bird let him outside, and then the wall burst open. <sighs> Dreamt of a swallow at first. Um, After that, just nightmares. Swallow. At times the dreams can multiply. Show the past as well as the future. The swallow. It symbolizes Siri. She contacted Dandelion. I didn't know he was in town. The poet? Heard about him. Someone left him the rosemary and thyme in their will. What? Oh! We were there previously. That's his? The rosemary and thyme? Where's that? As you enter the city through the red light district, you come upon a bridge. The rosemary is just past it. Dandelion inherited a brothel? So I've heard. How fitting. <laughs> Wait, that's a brothel. Thanks for your help. Good luck, Witcher. I hope you find your Siri. I thought that was a homeless shelter. That's a brothel? It didn't seem like one. It was really not quite fancy. Like I thought it would be. Oh, uh, I was wondering what that was. There's a crystal ball here. 
Okay. Broken flowers. I'll take your flowers. Yes. Okay, well, uh... Oh, I, I don't know why you're stand... Maybe that's an anaromancy thing? Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay. Well, going back to the rosemary and thyme. Maybe last time it didn't seem like a brothel because we went during the night time. Ooh, cover your mouth, lady. Voyage through those waters. Nor will I, the you big cool not to cute. That I'm not the... about to deliver myself to those skeleton Seamen. Oh, you make a you fine heard? sailor. Yeah, these guys See, are sailors. Everybody knows. Crew's gutted and flayed by now, no doubt. Oh, there's more down here. Rick's here. Time I went back to sea. Hey, a lot of sailors whitey. here, huh? Why'd your hair go white? Oh my god, what are you doing, man? You're doing something dangerous here. Know where me parrot is, would ya? No, I don't know where a parrot is. Oh. Because I guess geographically, Novigrad is surrounded by water on all sides. So, yeah, it makes sense. Especially because our current location is right next to the water. Oh. Okay. Rosemary and thyme. Yeah. Is that the next highest level thing? Pretty much. We can also do the contract while we're on that path. But, you know, we'll just walk around and see what happens. Where is that out of curiosity? Following the thread. Following the thread. I probably should have clicked on it properly, huh? Following the thread. Is it outside of town? Blood gold. Ooh. Cat school gear. A lot of green... Yeah, a lot of green quest marks now. We should get around to them sometime, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, well for now, let's just go to Rosemary and Time and maybe pick up that quest. No, that's a notice board, but there is a quest here. We didn't read the notice board outside yet. Okay. White wolf hide. Ooh. Hey, Whitey. Why'd your hair go white? Because I'm old, okay? Well, it looks like we might be hey, meeting Dandelion Whitey. very soon, huh? I don't imagine he'll be at the brothel all day long, but You're maybe right. sometimes. Pilot's death. A fuck what it be? What are you serving? What are you serving? Cards? Dol Blathana? Skoyatel? Siege Technician, Nilf Guardian. Mahakaman Defender, Skoyatel? Barclay L, Skoyatel. Nice to have, but not really relevant to us right now. Nope. Do you buy crap? Silver mug? You can probably dismantle that into silver, can't you? <laughs> 129 crowns, really? Come on. It sounds like a ripoff. You can have this, though. All the ladles and stuff. Yeah. Surprisingly enough, we can't sell books. <laughs> we can sell the drawing of an oven for two crowns. Why? <laughs> That's so strange. Okay. Uh, we'll leave the cards for now. Farewell. You look nicely dressed. Must be a classy in here. Okay. Notice board. Reeks here. Time I went back to see. A word from the Armorer's Guild. The Armorer's Guild would like to remind you of the following. No one shall forge nor sell armor nor helmets in Novigrad unless he has first joined our ranks and proven his credentials as a master. Oh, like a union. Members of the guild must pay two out of every hundred crowns earned to the communal fund. Two percent, not bad, not bad. Any member who knowingly takes on another member's apprentice shall pay half his earned profits to the guild. Whoa. Any member caught selling iron helmets and breastplates claiming they are steel shall be stricken from the guild registry. Ah, uh, because iron and steel look really similar. Any member who brings a weapon to guild meetings shall pay a day's earnings to the communal fund by way of punishment. No bringing weapons? Okay. Reminder, most honorable townspeople, please remember to warn any passers-by who might currently be found beneath your window before emptying out your chamber pots. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing they did back in the day, right? In medieval Europe and stuff. Wanted, Triss Marigold. Eyewitness testimony has confirmed that Triss Marigold of Maribor, known as the 14th of the Hill, 
a member of the infamous Lodge of Sorceresses, is currently in residence in our fair city. Anyone in possession of information about her place of hiding, plans or accomplices, is obliged by law, both divine and human, to report to the nearest outpost of the Temple Guard at once. Divine and human? Oh, because it's the eternal fire. And whoever helps the witch by giving her food or shelter shall burn alongside her. Unfortunately for Triss, she has a really distinct hair color. Why doesn't she just, like, cast an illusion or something? Maybe that'll be easier, huh? Because isn't that what sorceresses usually do anyway, to make themselves look prettier and stuff? Quick coin in a pinch! Need coin fast? Those blasted non-humans at the Vivaldi Bank. Vivaldi Bank? They're still going? Say your credit's no good? Come see me! No paperwork required, no questions asked, no limits. Loans available in Hucklandian francs. Hand Juker. Annual interest rate, 700%. Wow. Contract issued by the Temple Guard of the city of Novigrad. Fellow followers of the flame! In recent days, several officers of the Temple Guard have been ravaged to death in a most bestial manner. An investigation has been launched to look into the matter, so the perpetrator shall soon feel the iron grip of justice closing around his throat. Anyone able to help the guardsmen track down and punish this murderer, or murderers, as the case may be, is asked to report to the nearest guard post at once. A reward is foreseen. It is likewise hereby announced that any man aiding or abetting these bandits, or withholding evidence regarding these crimes, shall be punished by torture, imprisonment, or even death. Sergeant Gilbert Witch. Are you assuming it's a bandit already? A human? Do we usually take contracts for humans? I didn't think so. No matter how evil they were. Gwent! Vim at Vivaldi cheats. To all Gwent players, the dwarven banker Vim Vivaldi is a villain and a cheat. Using typical non-human trickery, he's conned his way to victory over me. Then forthwith demanded I surrender my cards without the slightest consolation or giving me the chance for a rematch. Anyone tempted to play with him, resist or regret. A well-wisher. Oh, we've got to play with that guy sometime, huh? Hey, Sounds interesting. Like what you see. Now who's over here? And what do you want? Keep it together, legs. What? Oh! <laughs> Get it. So the, um, yeah, they got mad at me. Oh, that's it? <laughs> that was really fast. We just came outside of the inn. Dang, I was wondering why people were screaming. The people notice before my witcher senses even told me. <laughs> Good thing we're in the slummy parts of town, so no guards are here to, um, to get me. This sequence was like an exact replica of the, the thing that happened in Witcher 2. Hmm. Okay, now, who's over here? And what do you want? Just so we're clear, when you lose, you can't claim you don't got the coin to pay. First off, I won't lose to you. And second, I always pay my gambling debts. Pure reason on Jacob's part. Not more than four yesterday, in this very inn, at that very table, a fella stuck another with a knife because he demanded his coin. Whoa. Cards and whores. Just not diversions for beggars. Ooh. Gwent? A witcher? Oh, hear about the notice by chance? Uh, I don't think I picked up your notice yet. Not quite, but what's it about? I hear right you're going on some voyage, need a companion. Not just some voyage, cross the sea. Mark this, when I got pressed into the infantry in 1242, I promised my beloved letter I'd return alive, whole, and with a pearl from Skellige. Not just any pearl either, a black one, the rarest and most precious. Well, well, ambitious. Perhaps, but they were empty words. I came from the war, that one and the next, but I never fulfilled my promise. Oh, time to change that. For if not now, then when? Thing is, I've grown old in the meantime, as you see. Can't manage it alone, need a strong shoulder to lean on. And a witcher's shoulders as strong as they come. So, what do you say? What do you want me to do exactly? Go out to sea with you? Plan's crazier than it is sane, but there's an irresistible charm to it. 
Offer me some pay and I'll help you out. Don't you fret about coin. I brought home a good deal of it from various fronts. Say we meet in Skellige, by the collapsed bridge near Arenbjorn. It's but a hop away from the bed where black pearls are born. Will that work for you? Sounds fine. See you there. Is it really that close? Somehow I doubt it. It's kind of like when you meet up with your friend, or you plan to meet up with your friend, and they're like, oh yeah, I'll be there in five minutes. But it turns out they're still at home sleeping. <laughs> okay. Ooh, there was a guard right here. Got my eye on you, white one. Silverton! You look familiar. Silverton sounds familiar. I'm pretty sure we've seen that town name before. Silverton is within Novigrad? Wow, Novigrad is huge. It really is. Wait. So this notice board, we've just exhausted it. Does that mean that we haven't seen this one yet? Because this one's white, this one's yellow. Or maybe it just restocked. Because I'm pretty sure I've been seeing them, I've been reading the notice boards as we come across them. Okay. Well, I don't see why we shouldn't just head to Rosemary in time, right? Unless if the other one's closer. The other level 11 one. Black Pearl. Oh, that's a, that's the right level for us too. Following the thread. Following the thread. It's right here. Talk to the supervisor. Okay, not quite as close. So let's head back to Rosemary and Time. Broken flowers. And what exactly are we aiming to do here? Are we looking for dandelion maybe? Somehow it's not going to be that easy, is it? Even our our dream was quite cryptic. I'll be damned. Oh, whoa. Wait, why are you... Do I know you? Oh, are you not willing to come out here because... Because there's guards here? Like, why aren't you... I don't know why you're suddenly... Who are you? Are you Claytop's people? Again? Or... Are you just looking to rob me for no reason? Stop walking into his soul! That's a good one. Good advice. I'd recommend taking it. <laughs> the drunk guy is like, Oh, what's happening over there? Uh, I don't know why these people attack me. I think they were just being thugs. Yeah, there's nothing here. What the heck? Did you just not like the way I look? Speaking of the way I look, is there a barber in Novigrad by any chance? There's gotta be! There's one in Oxenford. How can there not be a barber here? Lay me down with a barrel of beer and a cup in my hand and over me coffin sing this cheer. It's four in the morning right now. The only people wandering around town are drunkards and beggars and fistag addicts. In short, who kisses your ass today will bite it tomorrow. <laughs> Ooh, your dirty butt. Me down with a barrel of beer and a cup in my right I don't think we've been to this district before, right? Silverton. There must be order. Oh, we're back in the square. But first, I thought it a jest. We're back here. Yesterday, this improbbed me too. Teach you to make light of others' misfortune. So, what it take? A bushel of apples. No lollygagging. <laughs> Not so bad then. It is bad. I'd hidden a smuggled bottle of the finest Tucson at the bottom. Rich people talking about rich people merchant things. Is there somebody it here? Can't be. White hair, yellow eyes, slashed face, just like he said. You know me? Geralt of Rivia, known as the White Wolf, the Butcher of Blaviken. Geralt of Rivia is enough. What is it? A man came to me a few years past, paid me to keep a book for you, said you'd come for it one day. Oh. Who was he? Um, he didn't introduce himself, but the book has a red cover, that I remember. I'm sure I've not sold it. All right, see if I can find it. And perhaps glance at the others while you're at it. You're gonna make me find the book? Ah, I'll have a look. Be glad to look over what you got. I'm not really in the business of buying books though, because we find so many of them normally anyway. 
the wild hunt, the horse whistler, how to avoid colossal vessels, Naranson, son of Gunnestad, the little peasant who confounded his lord, <laughs> the beasts of Tukaj foothills, ghouls and al ghouls. Eh, I'm sure we'll come across these books eventually. Hmm. Sometimes books give us bestiary entries, right? So maybe it's good. Like, for example, the Ghouls and Algols one. If we didn't know about it already, maybe we can learn more from reading it. Yeah. Insectoids. Few remarks on basilisks and cockatrices. In beasts' clothing. Fauna of the Northern Realms. Nah, these books all seem kind of... Ooh, the ways and manners of the Skellige folk. Maybe that'll be important for us going to Skellige later? Why not? Necronomicon! Oh. Okay, I'll take that too. And, uh, where's the other book you mentioned? Red cover? You gonna give it to me? The ways and manners of the Skellige folk. One's attention immediately is drawn to the fact that their seemingly impoverished huts shine with cleanliness. The walls of their homes are usually made from pine and covered with a substance derived from sap which keeps out all manner and vermin. I believe it scares off insects as well, for I did not see a single one indoors during my entire stay in Skellige. I'm sort of imagining something like the Iron Isles in Game of Thrones or something. The interiors of their huts are quite spacious and usually divided into two rooms. The first is used by the members of the household during the day and separated by a doorway from the second, which acts as a bedroom and contains only simple wooden beds covered with linens and resemble sacks more than continental bedding. In the middle of each main chamber stands a large round table around which the members of the household gather to eat only once a day. This usually happens just after dusk, the time for their main meal. The supper is a hallowed event and is carried out in a nearly ritualistic manner. At its start, before the family members have even taken their seats around the table, the eldest of the family tears off a piece of bread and places it on something of a household altar, which occupies a place of honor in each Skellige home. This serves as a symbol of respect for deceased ancestors. At the end of the ceremony for the departed, the entire family sits down to eat. The eldest woman places a steaming bowl in the middle of the table. Everyone has their own spoon, which they dip one by one into the basin of food. They most often eat porridge, over which they pour a gravy made of meat or fish. Curiously, immediately upon the supper's conclusion, the eldest takes the piece of bread set aside at the start of the meal and places it in a large amphora. As I later learned, when an amphora becomes full, it is filled with boiling water and a beverage is brewed, which in taste some resembles beer, though it is much weaker. And it's made of Bread? Oh, okay. No, this is the oven. <laughs> Contracts. Necronomicon. To think that man appeared on an empty world and gained mastery over it unchallenged is as foolish as thinking the world will cease to exist after man's passing. Before the first human set foot in our world, it was inhabited by being superior to men in terms of wisdom, strength, and every other virtue. The beings I have in mind still exist in our present time, though they do not exist in a sphere available to human understanding. They occupy no dimension known to us. Where they live can best be described as a space between worlds. At times, one can sense their presence through a sudden unknown scent or strange feeling of anxiety with no apparent cause. A wind which blows in several directions at once is another example of their subtle manifestation in our realm. There exist various imaginings of what these creatures might look like, yet these have nothing to do with reality. For man is incapable of conceiving something which he has not seen, even in his wildest nightmares. The greatest horror these beings bring comes precisely from their indefiniteness and lack of concrete form. Yeah, definitely, fear of the unknown. Yet it would be a mistake to think that a formless creature is necessarily harmless. The power they possess is sufficient to lay waste to a forest, level a city, or whip an entire sea into froth and waves. Today man is a master of the world, but only for a short while. They await patiently and will soon rise and regain their one-time glory. This is as certain as dawn follows dusk, and dusk then again follows soon after. 
to drown everything once more in darkness. Oh. Kind of a vague book, but, you know, why not? Yeah, definitely, there's other beings out there. If the conjunction of the spheres can make elves and dwarves and magic come over to our world, what's to say that someday something else might come? Message from an old friend. That's the, the book, right? Interested in books? You don't look the scholar, but well, we've ones with drawings as well. You're very judgmental. Give me your red book. Did you give me the red book yet? Let's see these books of yours. Did you already give it to me? Was it this one? I was expecting there to be like a quest marker on it, or did you give it to me already? I don't know. Uh... Farewell. Hold up. Message from an old friend. Find a book with a red cover using your Witcher senses. That's right! You want me to look around your shop, right? Not just... talk to the guy? Okay. Who would leave a book for me? Ooh. The treatment of furuncles through cauterization, a study. The treatment of furuncles through cauterization, a study. Everyone's seen a boil, usually more than they'd care to. These deformities don't just mar your beauty. They can be signs of disease, or even the diseases cause an epicenter. If your lungs wheeze and your heart flutters, or if you're just sick of pustules, you can carve them off and be free of this ill for good. Oh, uh, okay. When you go to carve off a boil, use a sharp knife, which you've had a dog lick through thoroughly beforehand? What? For a dog's tongue works wonders in healing wounds. Ah, uh, okay. You've got to be brave as you go about it, slicing as confidently and steadily as if carving off a hunk of cheese then quickly cauterize the resultant wound, using a red-hot poker. Don't pay any mind to screams or tears. Tears. Pus, bile, and or any other humors need to be gathered in a basin, then dumped in a pit and the pit covered, else the illness might return. What? Why is somebody leaving this book for me? I- <laughs> Oh, there's more! My Manifesto, The Life of Jack's- Oh my god, Jack the Aldersberg. My Manifesto. Must be it. There's a letter inside. Oh, there's multiple books with red covers! Okay. The reasons for choosing Jack the Aldersberg as Grandmaster remain a mystery. The Order of the White Rose had gone through a crisis in those times and was on the verge of collapse, so one might guess that the Brethren wished to have someone decisive as their leaders, someone with a clear vision. The Aldersburg was precisely such a man. One of his first decisions was to change the Brotherhood's name to the Order of the Flaming Rose. Yeah, that's right. Originally, it was White Rose. The most puzzling aspect, however, is that the Order and the King himself decided to trust a man who, for all intents and purposes, had appeared out of nowhere. They say he was a wanderer, an itinerant priest who moved crowds with his speeches declaiming non-humans. They say he worked miracles and showed his flock visions of a world destroyed by the White Frost. He was undoubtedly a man of great charisma, one instilled with unshakable principles, which he in turn tried to instill in others. Was he truly a source? Was he indeed gifted with raw magic talent? That we will never know for certain. I wasn't even aware that the average person knew that he was a source. Oh, I thought they just thought that he died for no reason. Do they even know I killed him? Letter from A. Oh my god, no way! Did Alvin leave us a letter? No way! Witcher, in the ocean of possibility, some events are more likely, and some less. It is not easy to fish out the first, not even when one's intellect stretches through all time and space. Oh my god. I left this letter for you, in the hope that despite all odds, you will come across it one day, for I must warn you. Mankind is threatened. The prophesied destruction by the White Frost is not just the babbling of some mad she-elf. Perhaps I will have the opportunity to convince you of this in person. If not, I must rely on this letter, which you will read many years from now, at a time when you know more than you did when we first met. Know that nothing will save the world 
except preparing its entire population for this catastrophe. The old tales say a child of the elder blood can stave off the danger, but I tried and failed. Ever since, I have been haunted by a hideous vision, a crowned wraith, the specter of my failure. The King of the Wild Hunt. I was the chosen one, and the chosen one failed. You and your brotherhood are our only hope. When the time of the wolf's blizzard comes, men shall perish, and only the Ubermen will survive. Your duty is to give the world Ubermen. Whatever you think of me, do not fail, as I have failed. Hmm, he thought he was the chosen one, but probably the actual chosen one is Siri. That's why he's failed. But he died thinking that he wasn't able to save the world, which is kind of sad in its own way. Wow. A letter from Alvin. That's... That's the last thing I would have expected to find here. Is that it? That's it. Oh... I don't even know what to think about that. Moribundia, the vampire's last likeness. Thereupon Isabella... Oh my god, is this Twilight? <laughs> ...took Edward's glistening visage in her hand and embraced his icy lips, which were twisted into a cynical grin. Forgive me, my love, she whispered, stifling the sobs heaving her bosom. But my heart doth long with fierce or passion for yon werewolf Jacob Black, whom thou hatest with all thy vampiric thouness. Tis for the best, spoke Edward, shifting his pale face towards the equally pale moon. With me thy life was ever endangered, with yon werewolf thou shalt know peace and happiness." Edward turned around and took a step towards the exit, but Isabella grabbed his wrist and bade he stop. The touch of her hand was so tender, his heart newly began to beat anew after centuries of deathly stillness. There is more, spoke she, averting his penetrating gaze. I am with child. <gasps> but whose? Oh no, we need, um, Mori to find out. <laughs> What the hell? Tyromancy, or the noble art of cheese divination. Ooh, sounds like it's up my alley. I love cheese. What splendid diversity reigns in the kingdom of cheese? The ripened curd can be white or blue, hard or soft, fresh or aged, from the milk of cows, sheeps or goats, brined, pickled or untouched. This list could go on till the end of time. And each of them, every last slice, every morsel and crumb, not only brings with it, an unmatched rush of sensory experience, but in the right hands can be made to reveal the universe's most closely guarded secrets. For cheese, like the innards of sacrificed animals, the flight of a swallow or vivid dreams can be used for divination. The depth and size of a cheese's holes, when rains will fall in the coming year, when the color of mold veins tells who shall love whom, and the scent of a hard grana padano, predicts which army will vanquish its foes and which shall perish. The best divination, however, is done using the ancient method of fondue. One must simply melt two kinds of cheese, preferably a mental and gruyere, in white wine or in a pinch in dry apple cider. Then one must use a long stick to immerse a morsel of bread in the resultant thick soupy mixture, all the while keeping in mind the question, what shall my child be like when he or she, as the case may be, grows? then bring the cheese-covered morsel of bread to a candle, so that it casts a shadow on the wall. The shape will provide a sure and easily understood answer to your query. Oh, I want to try this. Can we try this? No? <laughs> um, it's always been the case for all Witcher games, even since the first Witcher 1, but it's actually insane how many books are in this game and just... Why are there books about Twilight fanfiction and cheese divination? Like, what? Like, what is wrong with the writers of this game? <laughs> I mean that in the best way possible, of course, but the detail in these books is absolutely insane. Ah, you're back. Did you have anything else for me? Went? Um... Okay, why not? Why not? All in. Up for a few rounds of Gwent? with a random book person. They might have a lot of Gwent cards because they run a bookshop. You know, books, cards, kind of the same thing, right? <laughs> Scoia Tell. Not a common deck that we run into. 
Commander's Horn, Blue Stripes, Blue Stripes, Siegfried, Kira, Sheila, Spy, Crinfred, Siege Tower, the Dragon. Mmm, get rid of Siegfried. We have Commander's Horn. Who do we want to do that to? We don't have very many Siege cards today. No. So probably we would want to overlap the Commander's Horn with Blue Stripes. So maybe get rid of Kira instead. Oh, Yennefer, good trade. And Sheila? Uh, I got a trebuchet thingy. Okay. Veteran. Yeah, the thing with this deck is that they can do whatever role they want. What's your what's your special ability? Doubles the strength of all your ranged combat units. Oh, free commander's horn. Do not let my beauty distract your aim, says Francesca Finn the Bear, the beautiful. <laughs> All right, I'll try. I'll try my best. Crinfred, decoy. This is amazing. Ooh! Whoa, that's an amazing spy! Zero? That's amazing! Mysterious elf. Is that the elf who left the message for Siri in the cave? I guess so, huh? Very strong. You humans have unusual tastes. Wow, I'm taking that. Thank you. Can I? No, I can't because it's a hero card. Are you kidding me? Oh, I was so happy about this too. Dang it. Okay, well, we also have Crinfred. Mm, what do we want to put down? I don't know. Okay, you know, not all has been lost because if we have Yennefer later on, can we use Yennefer to bring back the hero spy? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. Yeah, because medic would count as an ability, right? So, this can't- yeah, it says right here. No heroes or special cards. Wow, that's a really good spy card. What in the world? Oh my goodness. Put down siege, maybe? Just make him waste a bit of cards. Whoa! Okay, I give up. <laughs> I give up. I'm done. Dang. Where do I get better hero cards? I've only come across Yennefer so far. I've completely forgotten who I got it from. Are you kidding me?! Are you kidding <laughs> 15! I've never even seen Siri before, oh my god! Why is she part of the Squiatel deck? Is she neutral? No one fairy tales cease to become tales when people start believing in them. Wow, that's like almost word for word what Kareen was saying to us earlier. Wow, 15! 15! We have to win. Yeah, we have to win. Mm, maybe let's do... I'm trying to see here. Blue stripes, I guess. How do you have a Siri? Come on. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, not too bad. Two blue stripes is actually better than Siri already. <gasps> you must be kidding me. Are you kidding me? Really? Wow. Well, the show must go on. Don't feel good about this round. Another zero? Oh, wow. Okay, I'll take it back. I'll take back Stennis. Thank you. Do I want to give him a five right away, though? Uh, let me see if I can beat him first. Prinfred, I assume we have to use it now. 20? Mmm... I can make it a draw if I give him Stennis. Uh, do I want to do that right now, though? I don't know. I guess I'll save it for next round because... I do want the two cards, but it just seems like a bit of a risk right now. They have eight cards left. I have six. I gotta guarantee myself a win this round, at the minimum. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure why they used the Commander's Horn earlier. Okay, another Siege card. 
Maybe we can use the commander's horn on that? Yeah? Uh, I'm gonna think about Stennis for a little bit. Not good, we have less cards. Are you kidding me? What kind of a deck do you have? Saskia! Oh my god. Beautiful, pure, fierce. The perfect icon for a rebellion. Damn right. How come her card looks kind of crummy? <laughs> she looks way more pretty than this normally, right? What? Hey, here's your dad. What? She's stronger than her dad. This sucks. <laughs> this really sucks for me. Oh my god. This guy has a deck of... Are you... <laughs> this guy has four heroes at the minimum. Oh my god. Yorva. King or beggar, what's the difference? One one less. Oh my gosh. I do have the commander's horn and she... Uh, she used her ability already, so... <laughs> oh! Oh, but the commander's horn doesn't work on heroes, so that's the one saving grace for me. Okay. Mmm... Who can I bring back if I use Yennefer? Not the elf. I can only bring back one. I guess it should be the trebuchet, right? Because... Oh, but what if they have more Scorch cards? <laughs> then my trebuchets are done. I got a chance it though, because there's nothing else I can do. Yeah, we have to. Come on. Trebuchets... No Scorch cards. No Scorch cards. Are you kidding me? This can't be real. Oh my god. I, <laughs> I um... No words. No words. We're done. <laughs> At least we can play this round out to its logical conclusion, but um... Damn, what? <laughs> this guy's insane. This guy's actually insane. Now I definitely can't use Stennis, right? Five is too much of a bet. Oh my lord. Wait! Wait! Uh, actually, numbers wise, raw numbers wise, we're kind of okay here. Just kidding. Just kidding, we're not. <laughs> this can't be real. Okay, if we're losing anyway, then we should gamble on Stennis. Nah, Biting Frost, Zoltan. We can't win, but, um, damn, this guy has really good cards for whatever reason. Holy god. He had a really good draw. Fighting Frost. What was that again? Was that for combat? Close combat? Oh, but my freaking... Most of my numbers are in close combat as well, so this is really bad for me. <laughs> okay, use it. Well, I tried. I tried. <laughs> I wonder if that would have played out differently if I... if I didn't bring back the trebuchet in anticipation that he would use Scorch. I just can't believe that this guy had two Scorch cards, four hero cards, among a whole bunch of other stuff. Seriously? Really? Damn, he doesn't even have a losing message for me. Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna mark you on the map, and what I gotta do is... I gotta freaking go play that person in Vizima Castle. Yeah, cause I think maybe they'll give me something good, and then... and then we'll come back and fight you, okay? <laughs> this guy's deck was a bit unreal. The Merry Adventures of Muriel, the lovely harlot. Illustrated edition, ooh! Illustrated? Wait, where's the pictures? On one occasion, Muriel went on a journey to see her auntie in Maribor, accompanied by her nursemaid. Their path took them through a forest, and in this forest lived the raucous troop of bandits. This infamous group was led by Flynn Selms, and all the king's men had been unable to bring them to justice. Alas, such was Muriel's great misfortune that these bandits chose to attack her carriage. Muriel's nursemaid was old, blind, and deaf. Wow. She did not wake when a tree fell in front of their carriage with a loud thud, nor when the bandits fought a fierce battle against their guardsmen. When Flynn ripped open the carriage door with his muscular arms and stepped inside, 
Muriel had to deal with the dagger herself. Make our guest comfortable, young lady, the old nursemaid muttered in her sleep. Muriel obediently carried out her instructions. Oh, whoa, that's... I'm guessing this is supposed to be like um, a fantasy porn book or something. <laughs> it's written in kind of like, um, you know, they're like, oh, his muscular arms, like, okay. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad I came to this bookshop. Wow, there were a lot of treasures in here today. 